Trigger has always been one of my favorite animation studios. The way they use animation in such a unique way is beyond fascinating. If you gave me a single frame of a show, I could tell you if it was one of their shows or not. That's how distinct it is. Ever since the studio's founding in 2011, they have been the studio for fun and innovative animation. This can be seen in their more recent film, Promare. If you were wondering what I thought of Promare, well it's fucking great. The use of 3D animation is some of the best I've ever seen. It takes the strengths of 3D animation and stylizes it in a way that makes it unique compared to other 3D anime and it looks awesome. This goes to show how innovative Trigger's use of animation can be when you realize how few tries they needed to nail a style that's difficult to work with. I've seen so many shows try to integrate 3D and fail time and time again yet it works so well here. The models don't have complex textures, mostly solid color which masks the shitty PS2 models that they have to render. They abuse the hell out of the camera movement since you don't have to redraw the background for every frame when you do that. Instead of janky and stiff animation, which is common in 3D shows, it is natural and smooth. I get that they were working with Sanzigen who has been working in 3D for years now, but Trigger's influence cannot be understated. Other great shows of theirs are Kill La Kill, Kiznaiver, and BNA which came out this season which kicks so much ass! The series I have the deepest fondness for, however, is Low Witch Academia, and we're going to talk about that one today. Specifically, the one that started it all, the Little Witch Academia OVA released in 2013. I feel like this is appropriate after mentioning the damn series in every video. Imagine what the Little Witch Academia could have looked like if it had a million dollars too. I would consider this the Little Witch Academia of 3 Hertz. Not every anime can do this because this isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. Making things already established work out in a different circumstance is really hard. Sort of reminds me of a particular show that had an OVA funded by a Kickstarter that is actually good. Without further ado, let's watch this OVA. We start off with this performance by Shiny Chariot, who wows the audience with some magic. She also impresses everyone on the other side of the screen with this animation. I mean, come on, look how complex that movement is. Although it's not the most technically spectacular part of this OVA, it still gets you pumped by showing you just how cool this magic shit is. Then we cut to years later at Luna Nova, the school where witches learn how to witch. The power stored in the Sorcerer's Stone can then be... I'm with this girl. This is fucking boring. It's like learning about physics. I don't care. Why the fuck did I take that class? After the class, the girl by the name of Akko is sitting with her friends Susie and Lote. What did you do to my nose? Now you look like a real witch. Calm down. It's all because you fell asleep in class. I like how we can tell what these characters are like just from this. Susie is obsessed with potions and especially likes messing with her friends, and Akko is a shonen protagonist. She's just like, One day, I'm gonna make everyone smile, just like Shiny Chariot, and nothing's gonna stop me from making my dreams come true. Yo, Tails, we gotta find the Chaos Emeralds! Then Lote isn't having this crap, she's just kind of normal. I kind of like that. Also, I know I'm using the dub. I'm not retarded. I actually enjoy the dub. In fact, it's the only way I've watched the show, and it's weird watching it with Japanese audio. It's also like that because of the shitty stupid ass Netflix subtitles that are two lines of dialogue behind all the time so I switched off it immediately. Fuck Netflix! Anyway, the retarded thing is people who disregard dubs. I hate it when people are like, Uh, dubs? Why would you watch dubs? Dubs are stupid. Dubs aren't stupid, they can be great. I think that people don't really like dubs because it's really obvious that the characters are exaggerating and it sounds a bit cartoony. I think that this works in this show pretty effectively. The tone of it is goofy and lighthearted, so it makes sense and is kind of endearing. It reminds me of one of those cartoons that you would pop on during a Saturday morning. I especially like Stephanie Shea as Lotte. She sounds so meek, which fits the character perfectly. This was my introduction to her, and she's been one of my favorite voice actresses since. However, the dub is not perfect. The delivery is a bit awkward, but it really smooths out in the TV show. And Jesus Christ, the lip sync is awful. I don't care about ancient history. I didn't come here to become one of those moldy old witches. They're just no fun at all. Diana eavesdrops on this conversation and has this to say. Hey, what did you say? What are you gonna do? Rape me? Whoa, what the fuck, Diana? You can't say that! I'm pretty sure Diana doesn't like Akko because Akko is Asian. 
Akko is friends with Suzy, who is the only other Asian at this school, so I'm convinced she hates Asians. For real though, Diana is a real Malfoy in this. It doesn't help that she has Crab and Goyle following her around. In the TV series, she's different. Diana doesn't hate Akko for sucking at magic, but more because Akko doesn't respect traditional witchcraft. Akko often gets herself into trouble by messing with magic, which damages the reputation of witches and gets other people hurt. Diana often criticizes Akko for her recklessness and the Academy for letting someone so reckless study at the school. To Akko, it comes off as an elitist way of looking at things, but Diana doesn't do this out of pure spite. She really cares about magic and doesn't want it to be spoiled by people who misuse it, which to her includes Shiny Chariot. This is great because we have a clash of ideas of what magic is about, tradition versus inspiration. It also emphasizes a character weakness in Akko from how immature she looks for hating Diana for judging her mistakes. There are hints of TV Diana later, but I hate that for the most part that she's just a generic bully character. I get that they most likely didn't have Diana from the TV series planned at this point, but I wish that they could have made her a good character sooner because that version of Diana is a great character. Next is the broom riding scene. Since Akko has no idea what she's doing, we get some slapstick comedy. And like, real slapstick. Not just some girl hits a guy for touching her titties, like actual Looney Tunes shit. This is what I mean when I say the show is cartoony, and it made me feel a bit nostalgic even when I watched it for the first time. Very few anime have animation like this, and it's awesome to see Trigger fully embrace this. <laughs> She's just as bad at riding a broom as she is at driving a car! Damn, Akko cannot catch a break! Later that night, Akko is patched up and she has more than just physical scars. She said that she sucks at magic and can never be as good as Shiny Chariot. Uh, Susie? You looking for something? I probably shouldn't be making any more comments. The characters are probably 14, and I don't want people to be convinced I'm a degenerate after the last incident. Next, we have another assignment, and Susie summarizes their job perfectly. It's like a crappy dungeon crawler RPG. Now that the assignment has started, Aqua and friends enter the dungeon. Come out, come out! That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. We then see Diana and her cronies in the dungeon. Yeah, well, we've already gotten a lot of rare treasures. <gasps> Look, a mithril mail, a galvor knife, and even a silver roll ring. Those are all common drops. No one would dare refer to those as rare treasures. <laughs> yeah, don't you see that they're white and green in the item descriptions? Pfft, noobs. So then Diana and her cronies get into a sticky... Uh, fuck. Promise not to make those comments. Uh, tight? No, no, that's not right either. Okay, they're having some trouble with a minotaur. Akko and her friends bump into them, and Susie gives it some cum. God fucking damn it. Deeper in the dungeon, Diana and Pels find a dragon that grows stronger as it eats magic, but the cronies are too stupid to know that, and they feed it more. We then have Akko find this room full of junk. Oh shit, that brings back some bad memories. The dragon breaks through the floor of the room, and Diana's group comes through. Ladies, I'm going to be needing your brooms. That was so unnecessary, but holy shit was that cool. That just goes to show how much detail Trigger likes to put into their animation. I'm the one responsible for releasing that dragon. Therefore, I have to fix this. This was what I was talking about when I said that we see glimpses of TV Diana. She takes full responsibility for causing this mess, even though it was mostly her smooth brain friend's fault. She takes action and becomes a leader by trying to fix it by herself so no one else gets hurt. But she's still a cunt. Akko then finds a very important item. It's Chariot's shiny rod! <laughs> <laughs> there must have been a better name. Like, you could have called it something less generic, or phallic, like Chariot's Lance, or Shiny Wand, or something, but they go with Shiny Rod, of all things. This isn't just the dub either, okay? This is legit. The dragon then reaches the other students, where they make it even stronger. Akko and friends catch up to Diana and their teacher, Professor Ursula, and she tells Akko to stop the dragon from getting to the Sorcerer's Stone. The Sorcerer's Stone? Uh, yeah, Akko. The Sorcerer's Stone? 
You know, the rock that powers every witch's magic at Luna Nova. You shouldn't have been sleeping in class, Akko. Just kidding. That shit was boring. I don't blame you. You know, I can fly by myself. Of course you can, but it might have taken you all day. Holy shit. Akko isn't even safe from Lote, who has been trying to be nice to her this whole time. You know you really are a fuck-up when that happens. They start fighting the dragon, and there's some really fucking cool animation. The reason why they could pull this off is because of how they did the character designs. The characters don't have a lot of detail. This makes it a bit easier to animate when you don't have to account for small details like complex shadows or how certain textures and clothing would look well folded. The line work isn't very strict either, they are okay if things look slightly off so they can focus more on how the movement looks rather than the characters. Most of Trigger's other works are like this as well, as a trade off for more detail in the animation rather than in the artwork. It isn't even a trade off considering that the artwork is simple and stylistic, which looks great. I'm not saying every anime should be like this. That would be boring. I just like how Trigger has found a unique style they could work with. I like this resourcefulness. It's always better to focus on what you could do best, which for Trigger is their animation, rather than being unfocused and creating a lackluster experience. Akko then finds out she can use the shiny rod because she believes in magic and defeats the dragon. How? Well, it's because I heard Chariot's voice at the time. Diana, how do you know about the shiny arc? What? Uh, well, does it matter if two nukes were dropped on your country? Diana, that was kind of weak. We all know you really like Shiny Chariot. And with the hint that Professor Ursula may or may not be Shiny Chariot, we have the end of the film. Although it has some hiccups in the writing, this is a really fun short film and you should watch it for yourself. If you would like more, there is the second OVA, The Enchanted Parade, and the TV series from 2017, both of which in my opinion are overall better. But why would I specifically choose this film? Well, it's because it fits the video format that I want to do, which is summary and critique with comedy. Its length makes this easy to do since I don't have to leave anything important out of the video. It's also because it's a short film. Anime short films are quite rare nowadays. There are very few that come to mind other than Little Witch Academia. However, in the 80s and 90s, they were much more common as one-off OVAs. The format is interesting because it is very different compared to making a regular TV anime. The story needs to be condensed, so the writers need to prioritize what they want. Do they want to cram in a complex story in a short amount of time, or make a simple one? Maybe something in between? Animation can be overall better, and it will be less time consuming because there is less to animate. Of course, like most anime, you would need the right people with the right amount of resources to pull this off. I could see studios doing this since there already has been a trend of short form series like Ayura and One Room. So instead of 12 3 minute episodes, you could just make one 30 minute film. It's cost effective, which is awesome in this anime climate where studios aren't exactly wealthy. This is also the internet era, where people can spread the news of the short film they made for free. If their film is successful, they can make their property into a TV series if they wanted to. That's what happened with Little Witch Academia. If not, it would be less wasteful than making a full-length TV series or film. Just look at something like The Has Been Hotel. That was a massive success with a small team, and I could imagine anime studios doing this with similar results considering how popular anime is now. I also wanted to talk about this anime short film because it is a good showcase of what Trigger is capable of. You can tell that the people who worked on this had a ton of fun and passion for the project. There is a sense of playfulness and quality that you cannot see in any old anime. You can say that about every project of theirs, even the bad ones. If you've seen interviews and documentaries about the studio, you would know that to be the case too. Like this one documentary where the animators scramble to get the last keyframes of Little Witch Academia done, and you can see director Yo Yoshinari perfecting each and every frame. <laughs> The dude is nuts, but he wouldn't be doing this if he didn't care about his work. This is the guy's directing debut, so I don't blame him. 
Before this, Yoyo Shinari was a key animator and animation director on Evangelion, Grand Lagad, and Fuli Kuli, just to name a few. He's been a legend behind the scenes for a very long time, and it's really cool to see him in the spotlight now with Blue Witch Academia and Brand New Animal. There is also Hiroyuki Imaishi, who directed and animated some of Trigger's other works such as Kill la Kill, Space Patrol Luluko, and Promare. His works are some of my favorites when I want to see some crazy and experimental animation. These guys make some of the best anime out there, and I cannot wait for what they make next because it's gonna kick some fucking ass! <laughs>